you have your Bibles, open with me to the gospel recorded by Mark. And we're going to focus our attention on the 15th chapter of Mark. And we're going to land on verse 27. Mark chapter 15, verse 27. <coughs> Do you dare say amen? Amen. And I'm reading again the translation of 16th century committee under the direction of King James. Not that it is the only translation. This is what I'm reading from today. Amen. So if you hear somebody with another Bible quoting scripture from a different translation of the Greek and Hebrew text, don't feel uncomfortable and say it's wrong. Amen. Again, Mark 15, 27. And with him they crucify two thieves. The one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled which said, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyed the temple and builded it in three days, save thyself, come down from the cross. Likewise, all the priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes he saved others himself he cannot save let Christ the king of Israel descend now from the cross that we may see and believe and they that were crucified with him reviled him we want to talk on this topic hanging out with bad people. Amen. Hanging out with bad people. Amen. Hanging out with bad people. Now, if you were like me, coming up, Mama would tell you there are certain people you just don't hang out with. Come on, talk to me. Mama would tell you, don't do what certain people would do. If Joe go jump off the bridge, I wish I had somebody. That doesn't mean that you got to jump off the bridge. It was very important that we understood that there were some people we just didn't hang out with. And you knew that. You'd find yourself in certain situations with certain people doing certain things that you know you weren't raised to do. And that bell would go off. Mama told you, don't hang out with these people. The Bible says that Jesus hung out with two thieves that he hung on the cross with two thieves. The word thief in the original Greek writings, we have translated two Greek words from the original text to the word thief. The first word is kleptase. That's where we get our kleptomania from. And the next one is lestase. Now this word Kleptase 
it means stealing. It means stealing something from somebody without any other intent other than just to steal it. Amen. That, that, that's somebody just stealing your purse. They don't mean any harm to you. They just stealing. And you know, mama would always say, if there's someone that's going to lie, you're going to do what? And if you steal, you're going to do what? Lie. So, so the word here says that, that, that this word kleptes means stealing something. Now, this was not the case with the thieves that hung on the cross with Jesus. The word that's used here is lestes. This word lestes, it means stealing, but it means armed robbery. So this text, this word carries a deeper meaning. It means robbing somebody with the intent of hurting them. It, 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 it means I've come to hurt you first, then I'll take what you have. As opposed to kleptes, it simply means just stealing something. Yeah, I wish I had somebody up in here who understand what I'm talking about. Thank God, Lord have mercy, that he's a deliverer. Oh, y'all ain't got me yet. Thank God that, 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 that he changes things. Lord, I remember Mitch as a child. Lord have mercy. Hanging out with my boys. Lord have mercy. I'm not going to tell you the rest of the story, but thank God that he take care of kleptomaniacs. Lord have mercy. We didn't mean any harm. We just wanted some candy. Yeah, we didn't mean any harm. Lord have mercy. We just wanted a bag of potato chips. We didn't mean any harm. We just needed some pans. Oh, y'all ain't got me yet. See, but that's different from what the text is saying here. The text is saying that Jesus hung out with some bad dudes. Yeah, yeah, these were less taste. These were men, Gary, who, who intended to harm you and rob you. Now, 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 Luke 10 and 30, Jesus gives us a parable and, uh, and explains to us this concept, Mitch, of less taste. He says that in Luke 10 and 30, in this parable, Jesus says, and answering said, a certain man went down from Jericho to Jerusalem and fell among thieves. This word, lestes, and the thieves stripped him of his clothes, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. These were the type of people that Jesus was on the cross with. He wasn't on the cross with just normal thieves that would just steal something without any intent to harm. But these were some bad guys. Somebody to say, thank you, Lord, for hanging out with bad people. Lord have mercy. You know, yeah, yeah, Jesus hung out with some bad folk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some theologians believe that these two men, mother, were part of Barabbas' group. And because if you look at the text, they all were in jail together. And if you look at the text, these people have surmised that Barabbas was the leader of this gang. And Barabbas was the leader of this gang. And the cross that Jesus was on was originally intended for Barabbas, for Barabbas. So it was supposed to have been Barabbas and his gang, Lord have mercy, on the cross together because they all were murderers. They all were thieves. They all were insurrectionists. And this part of this word, let's taste, it means to be part of a gang, to be part of a mob who is willing to steal and hurt. And it is believed that these three men were in jail together because Rome has a zero tolerance on crime and all three of them were initially supposed to be executed at the same time but you do know that Barabbas got off 
Amen. And the choice was, which one of these men do you want to hang on this cross? Do you want Jesus or do you want Barabbas? They said, we want Jesus on the cross, but let Barabbas go free. Are y'all with me? But I'm so glad today, Lord have mercy, that Barabbas didn't end up on that cross. I wish I had one person that want to shout that with me. I'm so glad today that Jesus, yeah, was on that cross because Barabbas, was, Lord have mercy, see, see he, he was just as bad as I am. Y'all better hear me up in here. See, had it been Barabbas on that cross? And see, it was supposed to be Barabbas' cross. But Jesus, instead of the sinner, died on the sinner's cross for somebody. Oh, y'all ain't ready to shout yet. Y'all ain't ready to shout yet. And you got to see something here in the text. See, had Barabbas been on that cross, then we still would be bound for hell. Lord, had, had Barabbas been on that cross, uh, you wouldn't be able to call on him in the midnight hour. Had Barabbas been on that cross, Lord have mercy, you wouldn't, able, wouldn't be able to have tears wiped away from your eyes. Had Barabbas been on that cross, y'all ain't praying with me yet, uh, then that would not be the opportunity for you to have eternal life. Thank God that Jesus, uh, war Lord, uh, died on the cross uh, that Barabbas should have been dying on, uh, but Barabbas can't rock me in the midnight hour. Y'all ain't praying with me yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says that these men were a menace to society. And being a menace to society, Lord have mercy, these men, uh, yeah, were bound, uh, Lord have mercy, for hell. Are y'all with me, church? Uh, somebody say, thank God Jesus hangs out with bad people. Lord have mercy. See, the text says uh, that uh, it fulfilled the prophecy. And the prophecy came forth uh, in Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 and 12 says, Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil of the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death. Now watch what the latter part of Isaiah 12 says. And he was numbered with the transgressors. Yeah, and bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So look at the prophecy being fulfilled here. The Bible says that Jesus was numbered with the transgressors. But the Bible doesn't say that Jesus was a transgressor. Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah. In other words, he hung out with transgressors. But he wasn't a transgressor. Yeah, he hung out with sinners. But he wasn't a sinner. He hung out with hellified folk. But he wasn't hellified. He hung out with folk who cussed a lot. Oh. But he himself uh, never cussed. Oh, y'all, see, I I'm feeling something up in here. Lord have mercy. Yeah, can I tell you something? Don't let somebody block your word today. Come on, y'all, y'all better come on. You get your own praise on. See, Jesus hung out with some folk uh, who let us know uh, based upon the situation uh, that he hangs out with them type of people. I told us in, in, in Wake Up to the Word that all the characters in the Bible replay, uh, display a situation. And a situation uh, that we can call God's attention to uh, in time of trouble. So when things get hard for you, can I go and preach to you? When things get hard for you and you start slipping and falling, when things get hard for you and you start doing what you know you don't supposed to be doing, when things get challenging for you and you find yourself in situations that mama told you not to go to, come on, talk to me. You can remind the Lord, Lord, you hung out with some transgressors and I need your presence right now. I know I just messed up. I, I, I know I'm going down the wrong track. 
I know I'm in the wrong place. I know I'm in the bad relationship. I know things aren't working the way that I want them to work. But Lord, I saw you hang out with transgressors. And I'm asking you now, Lord, one more time. Hang out with me. Come on. Come on, church. Don't you want the Lord to hang out with you? Because I heard David said, this is what David said, uh, that I don't want to leave your presence. That if I make my bed in hell, there you are. If I take the dove of the morning and fly away, there you are. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you with me. You present. I'm in a valley, but you present. I'm crying, but you present. I'm struggling, but you present. I'm disappointed, but you present. I'm depressed, oppressed, but you're present. Nobody loves me, but you're present. Nobody understands me, but you're present. As long as God is present in your life. I wish I had a witness up in here. Yeah, the Bible says he hung out with transgressors. But watch what Hebrews 7 and 26 says. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, separate from sinners, but hung out with sinners. Oh, Lord, Yes, separate from sinners, but still our high priest. Whenever the Bible talks about Jesus as our high priest, it's talking about Jesus in the fact that he can forgive us of our sins because he understands. The text says in Hebrews that we have not a high priest that have not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Was tempted just like us, but never sinned. Isn't it good to know that we got somebody like Jesus? Lord have mercy who feel what you feel who cry when you cry who struggle when you struggle come on talk to me somebody isn't it good to know that when folk put you down and people don't understand what you're doing why you're doing that you can still go to the Lord and the Lord would never in no wise cast you away it's good to know that he's a high priest that feels your problems Oh, Lord, that, 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 now that shouted me. Because, see, the only way you're going to respect and understand that text is you have to acknowledge your struggles. Come on, talk to me, somebody. If you don't acknowledge your struggles, then you can't appreciate your help. I'm going to say that again. If you can't look in the mirror and say, I'm struggling, then you can't appreciate your help. That's why some folk, you can't help them. You trying your best to help them, but you can't help them. And the reason why you can't help them uh, because they ain't acknowledge that they got a problem. How are you gonna help somebody who don't realize that they have a problem? How are you gonna encourage somebody who thinks they already got all the answers? I'm trying to preach to somebody today. Somebody to understand this whole thing here that Jesus understood our problems because he became like us and felt it. So when you go to the Lord and you cry out to the Lord, you don't have to worry about him not understanding. You know, we get to get into some situation, we tell people, well, you don't understand it. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. You don't understand it. You don't, you don't. Well, let me tell you something right now. Jesus understands it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I might not understand it, but Jesus understands it. And see, we have, that, we have to have the confidence and the faith in knowing that if I go to him and tell him about it, he's going to work it out. I, I heard somebody say in the song, now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him, oh, not about some of them, but all of them. You know, some things we try to keep from the Lord, 
And that which you are hiding from God, first of all, he sees. And that's what you really need to be telling him. But we're so busy trying to fool ourselves and others that we think we can fool God. I wish I had one person praying with me. We think we can fool God. Watch this, watch this church. The Bible says here that these men were crucified with him. Look at the text. The text says that, that they were crucified with him and with him. Y'all with me? The text says in verse 27, and with him. And see, you got to see something there. Anything that we do with the Lord, anything that God includes you in, Lord have mercy, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, the fact is that God thought enough about you to include you in the process because you got to know if you hang it out with him, Lord have mercy, that, that, that just the mere fact of being with him says that all eyes are on you. Yeah, this word with here, this, 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 this word it means together with. It means a union. So the text is telling us that Jesus or that these two men were with Jesus that they were along with him, that they were in union with him, and the rallying point of the union is that all three of them were dying on the cross. See, not just Jesus died on the cross. See, there were two others with him, the Bible says, that were crucified with him. You know, as I, as I stopped and I thought about that, Luke, I said, you know, God is so good because God, in everything that God does, he includes humanity. Come on now. Everything that God does, he includes humanity because God is about saving humans. God is about getting humans right. God ain't concerned about your dog. That's your job. You stop your dog from pooping in the house. Y'all with me? God stops me from making a mess of my life. Man, come on, y'all better, better preach with me. See, because we can make some messes of our lives. Lord have mercy. But thank God that he includes this word with here is the Greek word soon or our English word S-Y-N, sin, which means the same, like synonymous. So the Bible is saying that these three men on the cross were synonymous with Jesus in that all three of them were dying on the cross. Are y'all with me, church? See, anything that we do with Jesus is an honor and a privilege. Yeah, Lord have mercy. See, Matthew ate with Jesus, and he was blessed. Are y'all with me, church? Uh, Peter walked on the water with Jesus, and he was blessed. Y'all ain't hear me up in here. Peter, James, and John went to the mountain with Jesus, and they were blessed. I went down on my knees with Jesus, and I was blessed. Uh, I had a conversation with y'all ain't praying yet uh, with Jesus and I was blessed anything mama that you do with the Lord I heard an old song say you ought to take the Lord with you everywhere you go and that what they say Joyce in the streets in a crowd in your home when you're all alone you ought to take the Lord with you. Every, you remember that, Della? Everywhere you go. Now watch the text here. The Bible says here, church, that these men were crucified with Jesus. First of all, I, I got to leave you with three points. First, I want us to see the position of these men. Are you with me, church? Now watch what the text says. The, the Holy Spirit is a super grammatarian, Gary, in that everything that he writes is for a purpose. 
Every little word in the text is for a purpose because God doesn't waste words. He's efficient. Somebody say, God don't waste words. Because when he spoke to me, he didn't waste words. <laughs> he was right to the point. Lord, I'm trying to preach up in here today. Y'all don't want me. Watch it. The Bible says that these men were crucified with Jesus. So you got to first look at their position. Now, the Bible is clear to say that one thief was on his right and the other thief was on his left. Now, see, that's very important for us to understand because, Lord have mercy, if I'm looking at the cross, what's on his right is on my left. Oh, Lord, y'all ain't got me yet. What's on his left, right? Y'all with me? So the Bible wants us, it didn't say one was on the right because that leaves room for interpretation. But the Bible is clear. It said one was on his right and one was on his left. See, that's a fixed position and that position will never change because it will always be one thief on his right and one thief on his left because the perspective is from the cross's perspective. The perspective is from where Jesus was hanging, not from where I'm looking. Lord have mercy. I wish y'all with me up in here. See, the perspective B is from where Jesus is hanging, not from where I'm looking. So that perspective will never change because I can never get on that cross where Jesus is. Oh, that should have shouted somebody. Come on, talk to me. I will always be looking at the cross. I'll never be on Jesus' cross. Why? Because I'm sinful. Why? Because there's none righteous but Jesus. See, you got to see something here. See, Moses couldn't have that perspective. Jeremiah couldn't have that perspective. David couldn't have that perspective because they all were sinners. See, the only one that could have that perspective was Jesus. Yeah, I, I hear preachers sometimes say, hide me behind the cross. I don't want to be hidden behind the cross. I don't want to be hidden nowhere. I want my life to shine. See, if, if, if I'm preaching up here and saying, Lord, hide me behind the cross. No, I want to say, Lord, I'm at the foot of the cross. Now use me. I don't want to hide behind the cross because that's the wrong perspective. I got to always be looking at the cross so that the thief on the right will be on my left. The thief on the left will be on my right. That position is fixed. See, the Lord fixed that position. Yeah, he fixed that position. Yeah, see, I can't get beside myself. We can't get, we can't get beside ourselves and start acting like we saving folk. Can I put a pen right there? And tell y'all need to stop trying to save people. And live right in front of them that they may be saved. <laughs> Say it again. You know, we, a lot of us think we God. And we want to get credit for bringing somebody. We want to get credit for who you are in life. Nah, baby, nah, bro. That ain't got nothing to do with us. Because the Bible says that God asks to the church, such as should be saved daily. Their position never changed. They will always be the thief on his right and the thief on his left. And you got to look at something in that position here. Their position also brings about their identity. Nobody knows these two men's name. And we will never know their names. They're only known by the thief on his right and the thief on his left. Lord, I wish I had somebody. See, see, I'm a baby boomer who was raised in the South. We had some people in our community I never knew their name. Lord have mercy. I just know them by how they were identified. Lord have mercy. Y'all want to know why we got so many nicknames in the South? Because we're always up to something. 
Y'all know y'all don't know that boy name too. And then you get to his funeral or something, you're like, boy, I didn't even know that boy name. I ain't know that girl's name. Because we identify folks sometimes based on what they've done or their position. These men don't have a name. But they're in a fixed position that will never change. Are y'all with me? And see, sometimes we need to understand some things here that God will put you some places and in some positions that you may try to wiggle out of. Oh, Lord, I, Lord, I wish I had one witness. See, see, God will put you in some situations, in some positions that you'll tell God, God, I didn't ask for this. Lord, why you got me here? Lord, this is not pleasing to me. This doesn't feel good to me. Can I tell you something? God got you in that place to bless you. I need to put a pin right there. Because there's some stuff inside of you, and we're going to see this later on, there's some stuff inside of you that you won't understand until you get in a situation to bring it out. Oh, come on, pray with me, somebody. There are some things, church, there are some things that, that, that God puts you in some situations and you'd be like, man, I didn't even know I had the strength to deal with this. I, 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 didn't, I did not know that I could handle this. But God got you in some places. I need to tell somebody that's in some places that's uncomfortable, that doesn't feel good. Just know that all things work together for the good. I need to tell some people that's struggling in some places where God got you right now and you're questioning God, God, why you got me here? God, what am I doing here? God, why, 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 why? God said, I'm getting ready to work a work in you. You just stay in your position. I'm getting ready to build you up. You just stay where you are. I'm getting ready to bless you. You just stay where you are. I'm getting ready to bring you out. You just stay where you are. But Lord, it's hot. That's okay. Stay right there. I got you. I know how to cool the fire. Lord, the lions are chirping at me. That's all right. Leave that alone. I got that too. Wherever you are, just know that if God has placed you in a position, God is working it out for you. Not only were they in this position, mix, Mitch, but the Bible says that Gary, as Jesus was hanging on the cross, that they mocked him, that they made fun of him, that it says first that it was the chief priests, it was the scribes, it was the elders, and it was the people passing by. See, so the text tells us, Sheila, that Jesus was crucified and Calvary Golgotha was in the main pathway of the city. So if a lot of folk walked by and, and, and a lot of people who had no skin in the game just passed by and saw Jesus hanging on the cross. So the Bible says that, that the people, Lord, that, that, that folk passed by, the passers-by, first of all, laughed at Jesus, mocked Jesus without really knowing the story. Now, now these people represent our today's social media. Lord have mercy. This was the beginning, or this is an example, I should say, of social media before it came electronic. See, these people were all passing by. They didn't know the story, <laughs> but they jumped in on it. You've ever seen people post some stuff about some folk, and other per person don't even know what the post is all about, and they jump all in the situation? Y'all getting too quiet up in here. Y'all getting too quiet. All of a sudden, somebody's playing the victim on social media. And you on that girl, be strong. Don't know what girl just did. You on that time, my bro, it's going to be all right. But you don't know what bro just did. Stay out of social media if you don't know what's going on. These folk didn't know what was going on. I wish I had one witness with me. Lord have mercy. First of all, the Bible says that the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders laughed at him. That represented the religious people of that time, church folk. Can I tell you something, church? When you're going through something, sometimes you got to watch out for church folk. I'm going to set that one right there. When you're struggling, be careful how you air your stuff out among church folk. Because some of the messiest folk in the world are church folk. Oh, y'all know I'm going to tell the truth. 
See, I don't deal with church folk. I, re I can't stand church folk. But I love followers of Jesus Christ. Y'all better come on with me. Church folk come to church to find out what's going on so they can go home and talk about it. Followers of Christ come to church to find out what's going on so they can go home and pray about it. Do I got a witness in this place? See, if you're a true follower of Christ, then the mess should stop with you. It shouldn't go any farther laterally, but go up. If the mess come to you, then it should go up to Jesus. Y'all ain't praying with me today. I can feel, I can feel y'all ain't praying with me. Watch the text says here that they laughed at Jesus. See, so not only were these two thieves in a bad position, but they also participated in the laughing at Jesus. Both of them. Oh, Lord have mercy. See, 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 Matthew tells us that they both. And then even when you look at Luke in the text here, the Bible says, and it shows us, that the thieves also, in verse 31, do y'all see that? Likewise, also the chief priests uh, mocking and said among themselves with the scribe, he saved others, let him save himself. And then the last part of verse 32 says, and they were crucified with him, uh, reviled him. It used the plural. Every time you see in the text, you'll see that both of these men participated in the demise of Jesus. Come on, church. Here, 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 here's the thing in their participation. First of all, bro, you dying. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You, 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 you've robbed people. You've killed people. You're being executed. What gives you the right to try to blow on somebody else? Have you ever noticed some folk who are always messing up, always trying to include other people in their mess? Can I preach? Have you noticed that folk, all the ones that's always trying to start hell, are always trying to bring other folk into their hell? They're trying to get a participation. They need participation in order to, to get validation. They're not validated unless they get somebody on their side. So they manipulate somebody on their side, not giving them all the facts to get you to participate in their rival, to get you to participate in what they're doing. These men were dying. This is a time you need to be quiet and start praying. How can you be messy and you're struggling? How can you be going off with drama and your rent ain't paid? Oh, y'all ain't got me yet. How you start mess and you should be praying that God would work some things out in your life. You see yourself struggling. These men were participating when they should have been praying. Can I tell y'all something? Stop participating in stuff that doesn't bother you, that you got no skin in the game. Stop participating in somebody else's mess. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. What position you in to be participating? Chill out. Take a chill pill. Get down on your knees and start praying. Lord, I'm in a mess. Lord, I don't need to be part. Can I, can I see, see, can, let, let me tell y'all something up in here. Sometimes you need to turn your phone off. Sometimes you need to just, 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 just disengage your page for a week. But we so hooked on drama. And, and, and the world is capitalizing on our love for drama. Why do you think, sisters, uh, that you can turn your TV on and get any kind of drama situation? 
housewives of this, housewives of that, wives of this, wives of that's filled with drama that feeds the need for us to be dramatized. Oh, y'all getting mad at me now because I said them housewives. Yeah, go on, hold on, Pastor. You meddling now. You meddling now. That's my show. That's my show. Leave me alone. That's my therapy. That's my getaway. That's my moment. Leave me alone. Some things we need to understand, church. I'm almost done, Monty. I promise. We need to start participating. Can these men be they dying? But they got the nerve to be participating in the mess. Your last breath. <laughs> Some of my folks, I'm going to trust the Lord till I die. Some folks say, I'm going I'm to I'm raise hell and keep drama going till I die. Hear these men on the cross dying. But they're participating in some mess that they had no part of. But finally, I'm, I'm going I'm I'm to get out of here. Finally, church, there was one who parted ways. Oh, Lord, have mercy. See, he was participating, but he parted ways. Lord, have mercy. He was in a bad position, but he parted ways. Now, his buddy was on the other side, and Jesus was between he and his buddy. Somebody say the man in the middle. See, Jesus was in the middle of, of him and his past. Jesus stood in the middle of him Lord, and his culture. Jesus stood in the middle of him and everything he had messed up in life. Come on, talk to me. See, there are some things that you messed up with. You got some friends some exes, oh Lord have mercy, that you messed up with. Come on, talk to me, church. You got some exes, Lord have mercy. And because them exes, Lord, I'm up in the matter, y'all. The exes have brought about a present situation. I'm dealing with some stuff now based on some mistakes I made then. I told us this morning and, and wake up to the word is that poor Hagar was an innocent bystander. She was a victim. She, she was a victim of the fact of Abraham couldn't wait on God and she was innocent. There are some folk that we have messed up, some innocent people in our lives that because we made bad decisions, we hurt some innocent people. This man is looking at his past. Now he's on the right. Jesus is to his left. And his friend is over there talking stuff. He was talking stuff with his friend at first. But then you got to see something, church. He had to see, in order to see his friend, he had to look by Jesus. In order for him to see his past, he had to look over Jesus. He had to look by Jesus. And can I tell y'all something? Uh, that Jesus, Lord have mercy, when you see him, that he'll erase your past. Yeah, when you see Jesus, see, there, there are some things, Lord have mercy, that are, Lord, that you stop participating in when you see Jesus. There are some roads uh, that you stop traveling when you see Jesus. You might be participating uh, in it right now. But I dare you to stop and take a look at Jesus. I dare you uh, to say uh, that I got to look uh, beyond what I used to do. And I got to stop uh, participating in some mess even though uh, my family is carrying on the mess I need 
need uh, to stop participating. But uh, what we don't see uh, is uh, the man on the left stopping, uh, running uh, his mouth. Can I tell you something? When you go to the old neighborhood, you're going to see uh, Bubba doing the same thing uh, that Bubba was doing uh, 50 years ago. He didn't uh, stop uh, running uh, his mouth. But uh, the thief uh, on the right, he came uh, to his senses. Now, I don't know what Jesus said, but something uh, the Lord said uh, that made him uh, change uh, his mind. And uh, it might not uh, have been a word. He may have just looked at Jesus. And Jesus looked back at him. Somebody said just one look. That's all it took. Was just one look. I don't know what happened, Mitch, but all of a sudden he stopped participating. Anybody stopped participating? Y'all ain't got me yet. I used to do some things that I stopped participating in. It doesn't mean uh, that what I was doing stopped. <laughs> it meant uh, I stopped participating. Oh, Lord, uh, the folk uh, that I was doing it with uh, kept on uh, doing it. Uh, I just stopped uh, allowing them uh, to cause me uh, to participate. Can I tell you something? Uh, when uh, you get that long text, uh, Lord have mercy, cussing you out. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that long text. Uh, uh, Lottie, uh, that when you look at it, uh, you see that sometimes, church, uh, I have my AirPods in uh, and Siri reads my text out for me. But then that time, Siri say, uh, you got a long text. <laughs> oh, Lordy. In other words, serious saying, uh, I ain't finna read this long text. Uh, can I tell y'all something? Uh, stop participating. Uh, and when you get ready to respond, uh, and you got a long text, uh, just delete it uh, and say okay. Uh, and keep it uh, moving. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, this man uh, kept on uh, running his mouth, uh, but the Lord uh, told the thief, uh, the thief on the right, uh, he looked at Jesus uh, and he told his friend, stop running your mouth. Uh, this man uh, hasn't done anything, uh, seeing uh, that we supposed to be here. Uh, you need to stop uh, running your mouth. Uh, and then uh, he said uh, to Jesus, uh, I heard uh, that you got a kingdom. Uh, I see uh, your inscription uh, saying uh, king uh, of the Jews. Uh, I don't know you, Jesus, uh, but there's something uh, about you. Uh, that makes me know that you're heading for your kingdom. And I'm asking one request. Oh, Lord, I'm not asking to come to your kingdom. I'm not asking 
Good Lordy, uh, to be an officer uh, in your kingdom. Uh, I'm not asking uh, to be uh, a important position uh, in your kingdom. Uh, all I'm saying uh, is when you get there, uh, just remember me. Uh, remember how uh, I told that fool uh, to shut his mouth up. Uh, Remember how I came to my senses when we were on that cross. Don't forget me, Jesus. I know you're going to your kingdom, but just don't forget me. You see, when we ask the Lord for little things, he'll give us big things. Ooh, yeah. When you're faithful over a few things, the Lord will make you ruler over many. Jesus told the man, not tomorrow, not next week, but this day, this day, this day, you shall, you shall, you shall, not tomorrow. You don't have to wait uh, till the battle is over to shout. Uh, you can't shout right now. Uh, you don't have to wait uh, until you come off the cross. Uh, you can uh, have your praise party uh, right now. Uh, I need to tell somebody, uh, if you're waiting on your praise party, uh, you can have it right now uh, because you said, uh, I'm no longer participating in my past. I'm no longer allowing my anger to get the best of me. I'm no longer allowing this person to cause me to want to cuss. This day, this day, ye shall be with me in paradise. Can I tell you something? I told you, uh, being with Jesus uh, has its perks. Uh, this man uh, was the first man uh, saved uh, by the cross. Uh, he was the first man uh, that accepted Jesus uh, while uh, he was dying. Uh, he was the first man uh, to be at the cross uh, and hear Jesus say, uh, you saved uh, you saved the day, ain't God all right? Say yes, say yes, say yes, say yeah. Ain't he all right? Somebody said that after he saved the man, he dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder and he gave up the ghost and he died. He died. He died. He died. But that's not all happened. He went down into a bar tomb. Stayed there for three whole days. But on the third day, rose. Rose with all power. With all power. With all power. Woo! Ain't he all right? Somebody said, thank God that I stopped participating with some friends that wasn't good for me. Thank God I got out of that toxic relationship. Thank God I'm from around that person who's always a victim. Thank God that I look beyond somebody else's drama, but I stopped at Jesus. My rock in a weary land, Jesus, my shelter in the time of storm, Jesus, my rose of Sharon, Jesus, my joy. Somebody said, thank God that he hung out with bad people, because I was bad like them thieves on the cross. I had done some things like them thieves on the cross. But thank God I, I had the sense of, of the thief on the right uh, and say, remember me. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah.
Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. And you're all right. And you're all right. I done got happy. Let me have a happy moment. And you're all right. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. Is there somebody that's ready to put a praise in this moment and say, thank God that it was at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light. I didn't get on the cross. I didn't get behind the cross, but I fell up at the cross and I can hear Jesus saying, this day, this day, you can shout, your worries are over. Your anxiety is ended. Your problems are gone. Say yeah. Come on. Tell them thank you. Tell them thank you. And you're all right. somebody at the cross thank God that you ain't participating thank God you've been delivered thank God you've been saved thank God you've been changed thank God you're a new person in Christ Jesus tell him thank you tell him thank you tell him thank you tell him thank you oh tell him thank you Thank you, Lord, for hanging out with bad people. Thank you, Lord, for hanging out with sinners. Thank you, Lord, that Barabbas wasn't on that cross. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hanging out with some bad people. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's that good, church. Did he look beyond your faults? Saw your need. See, both of these guys had done some great, some gross things, I should say. But Jesus took his grossness and turned it to greatness. Amen. You take your grossness, turn it into greatness. Do I have a witness? He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. Again, our problem, we don't, real, we don't, we don't think we're that bad. Because we're always trying to compare ourselves to somebody else. Oh, I ain't that bad. Look at what he doing. Look at what she's doing. I'm not that bad. I'm not that bad. The whole time, church, I look in that mirror. Say, Lord, I need you. I'm, I'm tired of participating in my own stuff. Let's know somebody else's stuff. That's what the challenge is. We're almost done. We open the door to the church. You know, the problem is that we participate in our own mental stuff. We get caught up in that that place, that space. Space of worry, that space of just, you know, you just can't stop thinking. You know, turn it off, turn it off. The more you can't stop thinking, the more you think about you can't stop thinking. And we start participating. And you know what happens when we participate? We start acting out. Acting out stuff that we have prefabricated that hasn't happened. 99.9% of the time, it won't happen. But we spend two days worrying about it. Well, Lord, what if? Oh, my, this might. Oh, I don't know because of this. 
none of it has happened yet. You're so busy trying to solve it in your mind, then you start participating in it. You just fall into that pool of bad thoughts. So somebody say, what's wrong? I don't, nothing. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Well, you said nothing because you can't figure it out yourself. I know you're trying to say something wrong, but I don't know how to say it. Is this happening too fast? Don't participate. Stop. Let's go to the cross. Kneel down. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are true, and honest, and a good report, and the list goes on. Think of these things. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Look over somebody and tell them I love you. Come on. Just look at somebody and tell them I love you. Just tell somebody I love you. Tell them I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Come on. Tell them I love you and you can't stop me from loving you. Come on. Tell somebody. Say, I, 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 I love you even though sometimes you get on my nerves. And that's real love right there. Amen. Amen. Dear God, we thank you for this moment. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest through and abide with all of us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Every heart say amen, amen, and thank God.